Hello everyone! So I'm finally getting around to making this video of more volcano soap. I've had quite a few requests for this video um, ever since I shared some of those photos in the Facebook groups of it. So I started off by making a diagram so I can work out exactly what I need, what off. I initially took 25% aside to create the grey bottom layer. I then had the main volcano that was going to be black made with charcoal. Um, that's obviously moving up the sides into the centre. And then for the lava that was going to kind of drip down, I used orange mica, red mixed with pink mica, just to give it a bit more vibrant colours, and also yellow. So those were essentially put in as drop swells before I then kind of pushed them down individually in stripes um, using the hanger swirl tool. So I started off with a pumice. Pumice stone ground, um, very exfoliating, really lovely to have just as the bottom layer of the soap. I didn't want to have it all the way through the soap and obviously we had to give it a bit of a textured layer as well as part of the challenge for the Soap Challenge Club. Here is my pumice stone, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. So I had the 25% of my total, um, I added the pumice stone to it, I also added some black mica, not too much because obviously I wanted a, a grey tone rather than a black. You can see this is a very very small proportion of my finished soap. Um, so I did very brief stick blending here. Um, the texture as in the, the thickness of the trace really wasn't, I didn't care too much at this point because it was just going to be the bottom layer and I was going to texture the top to make it look like an uneven stony type surface anyway. Um, I added a fragrance oil to this as well. Um, the one I used here was called Wild Elderberry. It's, it's one of my favourite fragrances and works quite well in soap. Like I said, for this bottom layer, it didn't matter too much um, whether it was a thick or thin trace. Um, but I did, I just poured it all together basically <laughs> at this point. So here you've got um, the pumice stone and you've got the mica. I'm just mixing this all in um, just to create that bottom layer. So for some reason, I then didn't actually film the next part of pouring this mixture into the mold and texturizing it. But to be honest, that's a pretty straightforward process. Pouring it in, I let it sit for a little while, took a spoon to it and just textured it to make it like an uneven uh, stony ground. I then prepared my um, colors. So this is before I mixed my lye with the next um, part of soap mix, uh, sorry, oils. Um, we've got the red, it's really vibrant. I've used um, for all these colors and used neon colors. I wanted this to look really vivid and like an active volcano um, colour coming down. So we've got the neon red with pink, neon yellow and this one here, the neon orange colours. Before adding the soap um, batch to those colours, I wanted to make sure I prepare the majority of my mix um, to the black. So off camera, I'm just adding the charcoal here. So the red, orange and yellow are ready and waiting, the colors only. I'm mixing now the main part first, just because I wanted to make sure that these very small quantities of red, orange and yellow didn't thicken up too quickly. So the colors are ready, but there is no um, um, soap mix in there already. So I'm mixing the black, I'm also preparing the fragrance oils. I'm adding a huge chunk of this here and then divide some up into the three different colors as well. The fragrance oil is really well behaved, um, so I had no concerns about this accelerating. So the black is all prepared here in a moment. And then I was going to really quickly add small portions because obviously of red, yellow and orange, I didn't need that much. It was just going to be the small quantities that are running down the volcano. So here you have the yellow. This has already got your soap mix in there. You can see it's a relatively small portion and hopefully you can now also understand what I waited pretty much to the end to mix this together because of course this small quantity is going to thicken up a lot quicker. So mixing in the yellow really well and then here the red. I do love adding a bit of pink to red if I want vibrant colours. I think it just brings it out really, really nicely here. And finally, also have a small portion of orange. Those three colours don't have equal proportions, but to be honest, I think that's a personal preference, how much you'd want 
you know, what element is most important to you. I did have quite a bit of yellow and red and off the orange, I just did a little bit less. So we've got all colors ready to go. Just a quick clean up here. I do like and uh, try and keep all my surfaces clear. Then I've got my hanger tool. I did use just some old um, hanger, clothes hanger I had, um, bent it into the right directions. I used some of my kids' straws um, from their water bottles, um, obviously never to be used again for water bottles. Uh, and that way, ages ago, I made my hanger tool and I've used this ever since. So there's no need, in my opinion, to go and buy something more professional. If you've got some clothes hanger, um, that works. So here's that prepared base. By now this is quite solid so there's no danger of anything kind of mixing in there or dripping inside. I did use a, um, a spritz of um, rubbing alcohol but you don't need to do that. That's more of a melt and pour kind of thing. Um, so here's the black. You can see the batter is nice and fluid. It's not too thin, not too thick. I wanted it to keep its shape just a little bit already so that when I um, drop the colours in they wouldn't totally muddle up and, and totally essentially disappear into this mix. Now of course this is all flat here, um, there's no shape to it yet. I'm sure there are um, soap scrapers out there that would help you make a volcano but you know a volcano is a pretty simple shape. You can easily create that with a spoon, you don't need anything um, special. Just tapping it down a little, making sure we've got no major air bubbles, especially with that uneven surface. I mean, they should have all been filled easily, but you just never know. Apologies for being off camera here a couple of times. So yeah, tapping it down, make sure it's all down, make sure it's all spread out nicely. And then, like I said, I was using essentially a drop swirl technique from quite high up because I felt it would need that to go down further. From quite high up, I'm just dropping in the colors one after another. So we've got the red in there. That was gonna be one of my main colors as well as followed by yellow. You can see I'm holding this quite high up and dropping it in so it doesn't just sit on the surface because this isn't such a huge quantity of batter. If I didn't drop it from a certain height, it would most likely just sit on top. So I was going further up high so that the colorful parts actually disappear into the soap. Now, because we are using the hanger swell, this soap does get pushed down as well. But at the same time, I wanted to make sure they don't all start right at the top. I mean, with a volcano, that would still make sense. It would still work, but I wanted some color to go way down right from the start. So I'm scraping out the leftover, put it all on top. I mean, it doesn't matter if that gets a little muddled up or a bit blended in. Everything will get mixed together a little bit anyway in a moment as soon as I use the hanger tool and then also when I push the soap up the sides as well. I do think that for this particular soap here, I had just the right level of neon, if that makes any sense. Um, the red was supposed to be red and not just bright pink because I don't have a neon red, I just have a neon pink. But the red mica mixed with a red and with sorry with a neon pink worked just beautifully here I think and it's a really nice contrast against the black now we have to bear in mind that certain colors as they dry they fade a little bit so well not fade but they come out a bit more muted when they're not wet so the black will not be as shiny and bright black here as here but um yeah it did work out nicely all together so we've got the hanger tool here um the idea is to push it all the way from the top all the way down against the gray in the center. Then again, start in the center top, but then shift it inside towards, you can see essentially the top part, which would then be the left and the right of the soap. So you can see I'm moving all the way up the center, but going downwards, I'm moving towards the sides of the soap mold. I hope you can see that. And then I went a little bit from the top, actually not, in the center but off center more towards the side of the mold i went up a few times it's a bit of a guessing game i have to say um and obviously you have to be careful the more you do this the more you muddle up your colors a bit and this is where you have to make sure you've got the right consistency if your soap butter is too runny this will all just essentially blend them all together um if it's too thick well you know you're going to end up with fewer um marble type effects here 
but I've um, blended them nicely. I think I'm just again, I'm cleaning up. I just don't like having messy surfaces. Um, make sure you tap your mold down as well so you don't end up with air bubbles, especially when your batter is a little bit thicker already. So I've left this a little bit and just kind of kept checking in and just making sure that I'm still happy with how the soap holds. You can see here now, if it was too runny, it would just kind of slide back down. Um, but this holds just perfectly. So it's not too thick for it not to move anymore, but it's not runny enough to just slide back down. So I went all across um, the one side first, pushed along with a spoon to then, as you can see, do the other side. What I really wanted to make sure is that my spoon went pretty much all the way down to that grey layer and then dig the spoon in, push it towards the centre to then, as I pulled out, move further outwards again. I hope you can see that here. So I did two rows of this, as in two takes. I went all along the bottom side first, then all the way at the top, and then had another go as well, just to make sure it keeps the right shape here. So the idea was that the spoon, by pushing it further into the center, would essentially create the top part of the volcano that obviously has a bit of a bottleneck, so it comes, comes in thinner, to then let the active volcano, the neon colors, come out again. So I'll pull the spoon out to create um, a bit of a wider top again. And you can see I just lifted up a couple of the parts again and um, the consistency of the soap was right here. It worked well. It held the shape. But like you said, like I said, it's just too good to have a couple of goes um, just to make sure it keeps in the right shape. Now, I don't have a cut of this soap, and this one was the better one, which is a bit of a shame. I have a cut of the second take I did. And unfortunately, this one, I wasn't quite as happy with the way the volcano came out as. It was quite wide in places, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but you can see, obviously, how it worked out um, by looking at the photo that I've used for the thumbnail here. So the cut is still nice. Um, but next time around, I would go back to just making sure that the spoon is consistent and doesn't leave too many big gaps because otherwise a volcano doesn't look as much as a volcano because it's too wide. And what you can see here as well is that the black, as I mentioned earlier, because it's now dry, is not as, as strong a black as it was when it was a wet soap mix. It's because it's dry now and the black just comes out as a really kind of dark grey, but I still think it works really, really nicely here. So here's the cuts. Look at the thumbnail to see how it works out when you really um, keep that soap, so that spoon pushed in to create that thinner part of the top of a volcano. But yes, I'm quite happy with it. Um, if you do have any questions or any comments, obviously, as always, do leave them here for me and I'll, I'll get back to you. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will be sharing a few more videos with you very soon. I need to be catching up. I've taken a lot of videos, just haven't got around to uploading them all. So thank you very much. Bye.